So today we're going to talk about Inuyashiki by Hiroyo Oku. I so hope I said that right. Now he is a creator who did the Nats comic and anime who, um, if you probably heard of it, it's gained some prominence with ultraviolet and sexuality and <laughs> super quirky aliens and whatnot. And this one was after Nats and while Nats it had some very strong structural problems with the storyline, this one is shorter and a lot more sound. So. If you're like me and you weren't a big fan of Nats, you might be interested in this one. But first things first, um, since this is a manga, let's talk about the artwork. And God, this guy's such a damn good artist. Like every panel and every page is so detailed. He really does that white background thing you see in a lot of other shonen manga. And this, his character's expression, they're all like supermodels, they're all have great faces, they're expressive, and the level of detail for action is amazing. Um, he does this technique where I know some of them are real life photos. I think some of them are also 3D models, but I'm not sure. And he inserts them into um, the manga as well. To, and sometimes it works really well with his um, art style because it's so detailed. And sometimes it stands out like a sore thumb, like there's a scene with some SWAT members and it looks like he just kind of copied and pasted them in a weird way because they're all facing different directions. But regardless of that, um, he just a master um, artist and probably one of the best manga character drawers out there right now. Now, the story of Inu Shashiki is about um, an old man who's 58 and he looks like he's 70. He's disillusioned a little bit with life because his family doesn't love him. Well, he's not disillusioned. He has actually a, a very positive outlook and he's a bright guy, but like his family does not like him. He's not successful. He just doesn't make a lot of money. He needs worked his whole life just for really nothing. Just we really got grinded in the system. His only solace is this new dog he adopted that he loves, this cute little Inu. And then eventually one night he goes to the park and cry because he has cancer. And he sees a boy there and there's a huge crash. And these aliens reconstruct him with the only thing they have available, which is um, their weaponry. <laughs> so then this old man becomes like a cyborg robot android thing. And you know, it, from there it goes on from him and the young man both having these superpowers and how they express it personally within the world. And it's fun to see the dichotomy because he becomes like the god of Shinjuku and he's able to heal people and he chooses to do that while the young man takes the villain role and just goes full care of psycho mode and just <laughs> heals people indiscriminately. Um, sometimes for petty reasons, sometimes some somewhat legitimate reasons which makes it more interesting like um, because of some bullying and whatnot um, his mom commits suicide but when he comes out that he's the killer and he just just a huge mass murder and just kills all these internet trolls um so it, you can kind of see it in some ways cringy but at the same time like um it's handled really well and i think the mass shooting scene is handled better than it is in nats um i do like dark transgressive stuff in my fiction and but in nats the shooting scene had some parts of hard realism but at the same time this can't be shown in thing where it's like the show all the new characters and their power levels and whatnot. And it, it, that, that mesh, even, it doesn't work well. Gravity's Rainbow does a great job of taking the transgressive and the funny and put them together. But this one, it's like, it, it was very unclear what he was trying to go for. But the mass shooting scene here, while it's ridiculous, it's like da 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 the computer screens, it works really well. Um, it's not as over the top. I don't think the gravity is there as much as it was in Nat because it is a more, bit more depersonalized, but it is interesting. Also, there's a lot of um, references to pop culture in this manga too, with either like um, 2chan or <laughs> they reference a lot of other manga. Like when um, Inuyashiki starts, first starts to fly, he starts singing the Astro Boy theme song. It, it was called Adam in Japanese, but he starts singing that theme song um, to help himself get up the courage to fly and everything. Or <laughs> There's this really strange, it's on YouTube, you should check it out, but like, um, Hiro, Hiro, the main character, just kills a whole family, and he, the daughter comes back and she's like, why did you do this? And it's like, it's like, oh, what is some of your favorite manga? Like, oh, One Piece, Attack on Titan, One Piece? <laughs> like, so you get like some kind of goofy scenes like that as well. Um, now, with everything I said about it, it does sound like a kind of ridiculous manga, um, but this one, it's just a knack of like, you're just able to make it work for some reason. And even though the, an old man android doesn't sound like a great character, you really root for this guy. He's really a good guy and he turns it around with his family at the end too. And he has some very heartfelt emotional scenes. And it's interesting the dichotomy between 
um, hero kills to feel alive and he saves people because he feels alive because he finally has a place in society that he's actually useful and makes an impact and it's not just a salary man now here's some spoilers ending of it oh, okay so uh, the asteroid's gonna hit the earth what <laughs> and um both characters commit suicide to stop the asteroid it's interesting because hero does it at first after he declares war on all of tokyo and the reference i'm getting in the scene of the pop culture reference where they try to blow up the asteroid from the middle to um, blow it up and make it go off it doesn't work though um so you know hero blows himself up and his reasoning is like hey i have people here who i love and respect too it kind of redeems him and kind of doesn't it's more up to you and Inuyoshiki has to do it as well and it's this really heartfelt moment where it does crystallize the scene because he finally gets what he wants he gets his purpose in life he gets the love of his family and even though it took him becoming a god and healing people <laughs> but having to give that up and also i think it works really well because he, the author doesn't have to deal with the long-term repercussions of these two possibly immortal beings living on the earth for the rest of their life and you know solving all of humanity he doesn't have like the superhero problem where it's like dude you're a superhero but you only work in america you don't do anything else from any other nation because that would be a bit too more exploitative maybe um, i don't know if that's the right word but like maybe too power fantasy to a ridiculous degree where you solve everything that's happening in africa the middle east and other nations and all wars like then you wouldn't be you wouldn't be writing a book about this reality anymore so he's able to solve that and keep it centralized in japan in a believable way well nats which implied it's going on everywhere but um it, it'd be like if this is happening everywhere how does nobody find out and it's I, I know there's a reason for it but it's not the strongest one so this one works in a much more condensed form like that so if you are curious about manga if you're curious about like ultra violent works and stuff like that and you want to see like um these real dramas with like really pulpy elements to them i definitely recommend in your shiki the art is worth the price of admission on its own it's only 85 chapters so i read it like in a day or two um but i yeah that's in your shiki by hiria oku and again if you watch scats but you weren't the biggest fan of it i definitely check this say check this one out